Well, the community's outrage in Anaheim is fueled in part by the fact that images of police brutality were caught on camera. But across the country, we reported on police demanding people to stop recording them, stripping them of their phones, even arresting people for rolling the camera. And all this has raised questions over our First Amendment rights. But at least one police chief is making it clear that recording law enforcement is, in fact, legal. Here in Washington, D.C., Police Chief Kathy Lanier issued an order explaining the constitutional rights of citizens. Here is a statement RT obtained from the police department. States, quote, while we have pre-existing policy that addresses interaction with the media, the new general order reaffirms the Metropolitan Police Department's recognition of the First Amendment rights enjoyed by not only members of the media, but the general public as well to record, photograph, and or audio record MPD members conducting official business or while acting as an in an official capacity in any public place unless such recordings interfere with police activity. So, what will it take for the rest of the country to follow suit? To discuss this, Steve Silverman, founder and executive director for Flex Your Rights, joins us now. Welcome, Stephen. So, sounds like a good effort, a good start on behalf of the police department here in Washington, D.C. Uh, do you think it's going to work? Oh, I think so. I think the chief is, is recognizing what the courts around the country are already recognizing, and that is that recording on-duty police is protected First Amendment activity and that citizens absolutely have the right to do it. So citizens have these rights, um, but oftentimes when you're in a situation, when you're faced with a police officer and he's either intimidating you or telling you to, to put the phone away or they're... Departments and officers have essentially gotten the memo. And so often police officers will intimidate citizens into thinking that they do not have the right to record police, but it's essential that in such a situation, citizens recognize that they absolutely do have the right to record to the police and they need to understand how to stand up uh, to the police in those situations. So, I mean, despite the fact that this is a, a fundamental right in, in most states, the majority of the states, it still happens. Um, so, I mean, what is it? Are police officers ignorant uh, of the law? In, in, in some ways, yes. Um, a lot of legislatures have come up with uh, wiretapping laws that are a little bit legally complicated. But essentially, two of the harshest wiretapping laws uh, in the nation, in, in Massachusetts and in Illinois, that made it a felony to openly record the police, essentially. It was a misreading. The courts there have struck that down and have said very unambiguously that citizens have the right to record the police. And so while police are slowly going to be coming around, I mean, you know, Chief Lanier has come around and it's going to come one police department at a time. In the meantime, citizens are going to need to be prepared to assert their right to record police and do it in a very delicate manner. Now, there seems to be this misconception that this First Amendment right applies only to the media, but not true. Absolutely not. You know, the First Amendment applies to, to any person because any person who has a camera um, simply, you know, this device right here is, is one of the most amazing devices uh, in human history because in a second, within seconds, you can be recording police activity, perhaps even police misconduct, and beam that around the world to potentially billions of people within seconds. And so it's understandable that police are simply just not used to sort of feeling kind of like, uh, you know, celebrities having paparazzi coming around, but they have to recognize that if they have a badge and a gun, that they have to respect people's right to record them. And if they're not doing anything wrong, they shouldn't feel that uh, intimidated by this power that citizens now have. And we are seeing the effects of citizens having that power. These videos, some of them shocking, some of them brutal, being caught on tape and really, you know, putting to light some of these things that really do go on. And it's this technology that allows allows this for people to see the truth, you know. Um, but I mean, let's say kind of break it down. Let's say you're, you see something, you're, you, you pull out your phone and you're recording a, a police officer doing whatever it is and he tells you, he threatens you and tells you to put the phone away or he's going to arrest you. How can you respond to that? Right. Um, I wrote an article uh, in Reason.com uh, called Seven Rules for Recording Police and that really lays out, you know, all the different things you can do. You can get a little bit a little bit complicated, but the most important thing to recognize is that you do have the right to record the police 
And when you're, you have that camera out, you, you've you installed a, uh, uh, something like Kik, Q-I-K, which you can install on your phone, turn it on, and you can be recording in seconds. Um, you're, you're holding the phone up, you know, like this, and you're sort of having a conversation with the officer. Now, oftentimes, the officers will say something like, okay, I need you to step back. I need you to step back there. And then you're sort of finding yourself in a negotiation. How far back should I step, officer? And at the same time, it's important to recognize that at any moment, that officer may very well arrest you for recording them, even though it's not illegal, but call it something like obstruction of justice, disorderly conduct. But what's happening is these brave citizens like Jerome Voris in Washington, D.C., that, that this is ultimately the culmination of, he recorded the police who was taking pictures in Georgetown. He was arrested and charged with obstruction or something like that. Ultimately, the charges were dropped. The ACLU, of course, took the case before that. And this is the culmination of that case by a brave young man who stood his ground and recorded the police. And so it's important to understand that in some ways you're engaging in, in civil disobedience in a sense that you could be arrested at any given moment. So it's up to you to decide whether you're willing to be arrested and, and have perhaps your cause be taken up by the ACLU and become a court case. That's your decision to make. But it's important to understand that you do have the right to record police, and you should do it because when you see what's you know the, the footage that happened in Anaheim, when you have the recording, it's able to stand up in court against a police officer's word. So it sounds like people really need to be knowledgeable as to what exactly their rights are. Exactly. You know, um, in most states, th this is legal. I believe 38 states, correct me if this is incorrect, but I believe 38 st states allow citizens to record police. Um, in the remaining 12 states, though, I are they out of luck, or, or what can they do? No. In those 12 states, th they have what's called two-party consent, where essentially both parties are supposed to consent to being recorded. But even in those states, the courts have recognized that a citizen who is openly recording on-duty police has the right to do that. And that sort of doesn't apply in these cases because police officers, as the courts have held, do not have uh, an extra re you know, expectation of privacy to not be recorded. And so citizens need to understand that the courts are on their side on this. Just about every single case that has gone to court, uh, the jury has either thrown it out or the judges have struck it down. And so even if that officer arrests you for disorderly conduct or some uh, catch-all misdemeanor, it's important to be able to stand your ground, remain calm and cool, um, and then afterwards, you know, protect your footage by, you know, making sure your swipe code is set. You know, I've got one on my Android device. I highly recommend it. Even the police aren't able to break through these, these swipe codes for the most part. Um, and so you want to protect yourself and protect your footage. Uh, by following these steps. All right. And you know, because of these these devices, citizens have captured some pretty shocking things with their everyday with their with their phones. Here is one example of something that happened in DC back in May. So you saw him there pulled a, a man in a, a wheelchair out of out of the wheelchair, threw him to the ground, and of course this video was made public, stirred outcry, you know. But if it wasn't for somebody capturing this on their smartphone, things like this would have never been public. So this is really playing a significant role, um, you know, in in changing the way. Um, law enforcement interacts with, with the public and the truth actually getting out there. Absolutely. In so many cases, we find that citizens capture footage. For example, a young man in University of Maryland uh, a few years back um, was beaten by riot police for simply skipping along. And the police claimed that he attacked uh, the horse. And ultimately, they uncovered the, the footage from the security cameras. Ultimately, after a little bit of a struggle, they captured that footage, but they found that the police lied completely. And if not for that footage, um, that young man may have a felony on his record rather than those police officers All perhaps right, facing Steve. charges. Thank you so much. for Very interesting. A lot of useful tips there. That was Steve Silverman. He's the founder and executive director for Flex Your Rights.